It's mid-September 2021. My name is Aaron Boster, MS Neurologist in Columbus, Ohio. In this video, I'm going to share with you my evolving opinions about COVID-19, vaccines, MS therapeutics, and trying to get through this pandemic. Don't turn away because that starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm the founder of the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, where we care for families impacted by MS from around the globe. It's September 2021 as I make this video. I wanted to share my opinions about vaccines and boosters, particularly in the MS population, and our evolving understanding of MS therapeutics and how it has an impact on COVID and on vaccines. You have to talk to your doctor about what's right for you. I am not giving you medical advice. I'm literally giving you my personal opinion that stated I spend all day long thinking about this as I care for a group of families impacted by MS. As we try to navigate through this safely, I have to tell you that it is definitely top of my mind. Let's put some things out on the table. Having multiple sclerosis in and of itself does not represent an immunosuppressed state. Having MS as it is does not increase the risk of contracting COVID and it does not increase the risk of a more severe COVID unless you have very, very advanced MS and have difficulties moving arms and legs and with breathing. Second, some of the MS medicines have no bearing on your ability to fight an infection. They are not immunosuppressant in nature. Some are. And that matters as it relates to fighting off infections in general, including the COVID-19 infection. And so it depends on which one and when during the time you're taking it, it matters. Let's flush that out a little bit. So certain medications like the interferon injections and glutamor acetate injections and teraflutamide, that's a Baggio. These are medicines that have very little impact on suppressing the immune response. Generally speaking, if you're on them, it's less likely that you're going to have an issue fighting off COVID. There are other medicines, for example, taking alemtuzumab, Lymtrata. If you just got Lymtrata, then you are probably very lymphopenic. We've removed a lot of your lymphocytes, your white blood cells. And it's going to take a while for them to come back, about six months for the B cells and about nine to 12 months for the T cells. And so we would imagine that during that time that you're suppressed. And if you were to contract COVID, you would have a more severe time of it. If you take that same human and go past that time period, let's say past six months, definitely past one year, there is a very, very different situation because they've reconstituted their immune response. So they've rebuilt their immune cells back. Now, if they are exposed to COVID, they should be able to fight it off with a full repertoire of immune cells, a very, very different scenario and much safer. So as I make this video in 2021, if you just got Lemtrada, it's a very different situation than if you were dosed back in 2016. Think about a drug like Mavenclad. Mavenclad is a medicine that suppresses your immune response, but not fully. It's like mild suppression, and it's not for a very long time, let's say about four months after you take the pills. So again, it really matters when in the time course we're talking. If you got Mavenclad years ago, your immune response, we would assume, has reconstituted, and we would not expect you to have difficulty in fighting off a COVID infection. If you just got Mavenclad and your immune response is suppressed, we would expect that's a window of time where it may be more serious. Again, on the topic of does your disease-modifying therapy increase the risk of a more severe COVID infection, we could think about the B-cell depleters, rituximab, rituxan, ocrelizumab, ocrevus, ufatumumab, that's casempta. And these medicines deplete B-cells and they keep them suppressed. They don't have as much of an impact on the T-cells. And the data is kind of um, not clear, but some of the studies suggest that being on a B-cell depleter might increase the risk of a more severe COVID. There's been other studies that suggest that's not the case. And I think today, we're not exactly sure what is exactly the answer. What about Jelenia and all of its uh, new cousins like Zyposia and Mazent and Ponsoy? What about those medicines? We do know that those medicines as a class can increase the risk of upper respiratory tract infections. And there's some data that they might have some impact on fighting off COVID infection. Now, if you're taking a fumaric ester, this would be like Vumerity or Tecfidera or one of the generics. Most of the time, this does not have an impact on your white blood cells. Let's say that about 20% of the time, there's a side effect on Tecfidera, let's say, 
where it suppresses your white blood cells some. And if that's the case for you, again, we might find ourselves in an immunosuppressed state and that may increase the risk of a more severe COVID infection if you were to get infected. Now, if you find that you have a COVID infection, what do you do as it relates to your MS and your disease-modifying therapy? I want you to reach out to your provider. So I appreciate when my patients contact me, if God forbid they've contracted COVID, so that we can game out together what's the right course of action. And that's what I would recommend to anyone who's listening right now. Shifting gears slightly. Let's talk about the COVID-19 vaccines. And here in the United States, we have three vaccines that are available. The Pfizer two-step mRNA vaccine, the Moderna two-step mRNA vaccine, and the one-step J&J vaccine. And I've done videos on how these vaccines work. And so I'll, I'll throw a link up above in case you haven't checked those out and want to learn a little bit more about them. Again, I'm making this video in September 2021. The big question that I'm being asked is, should I get a booster? So let's just address the whole vaccine question. Again, the disclaimer is you need to make sure that you're checking with your doctor about the specifics for what's right for you. And I'm speaking in generalities. Do I think it's a good idea to get a COVID vaccine? Yes, I very, very much do, genuinely. I do think that they're safe. I do not think that they're going to change your DNA. I do not think that they're going to necessarily throw you into an MS attack. I do think that they're going to protect you in a way that is super meaningful. And this is based on all the data coming in about who is contracting COVID, who is requiring hospitalization, and frankly, who is dying um, from COVID right now. And the vast majority, whether that be the, the variant that we have been dealing with the last year or this new Delta variant, are the unvaccinated. And so whatever the situation is, I'm voting that we consider getting vaccinated. Right now here in the United States, you're eligible for a booster vaccine if you are in an immunosuppressed state. So having MS in and of itself is not an immunosuppressed state. However, as I just mentioned, many, many of the medicines I just listed are forms of immunosuppressants. So if you're taking Lumtrata, particularly in that first year, if you're on Mavenclad, particularly in that first window, and in many respects, Jelenia and all those drugs are functional immunosuppressants. Tysabri is a compartmental immunosuppressant. You can have immunosuppression with 20% of patients taking Tecfidera. The point is, it's not exactly straightforward, and you need to talk to your doctor about whether you are immunosuppressed, and as such, whether it would be a good idea to get the booster. Now, again, generally speaking, I want my patients who are eligible to get a booster, because scientifically or medically, it makes a world of sense. What you're doing is you're saying, okay, I'm going to show the immune system its target again, and help the immune system build up a more robust army against that target. I'm literally boosting my immune response in preparation for seeing the virus. Now, what about the Delta variant? People who are immunized fare better against the Delta variant than those that don't, simply put. Are the current vaccines 100% effective against the Delta variant? It doesn't matter. It, they are effective. I think I read something, maybe there's 70 or 80% effective. I mean, that's better than what we have for flu shots, guys. It's still very, very effective. And so this next section is super, super important to me. It's probably one of the most relevant situations that I'm dealing with in clinic with families impacted by MS right now. And that's the interface between risk of contracting COVID, vaccines against COVID, and the specific disease modifying therapy that that person's taking. Turns out that some of the DMTs negatively impact our ability to mount an immune response when vaccinated and some don't. So when you're vaccinated against COVID, you build a T cell response against COVID and a B cell response and it's this B-cell response that makes antibodies. So you have the two arms of the adaptive response that can then attack COVID. It turns out that if you're taking certain classes of MS medicines, it impairs the B-cell response. It doesn't mess with the T-cell, but it does seem to diminish, truncate, or really limit the B-cell response. What are the medicines? The B-cell depleters. So this is rituximab, rituxan, oculizumab, ocrevus, uh, ufutumumab, kisempta. Also, some of the pills, specifically the S1P1 class, this is Jelenia, Zipanamod, Ponsoy, Mazent, those medicines. And so if you have MS and you're on those medicines, the evidence appears that, those, that they do have a negative impact in suppressing the full response to the vaccine. So what do we do? First off, you need to talk to your doctor. Please don't uh, airy-fairy just stop those medicines because there's risks in doing that. 
Second, don't freak out because having a T cell response is way better than having no response. A couple things that appear to make a lot of sense and things that I'm recommending to most of my patients. Number one, wear a mask. Seriously, guys, wear a mask. If you are not in your home, wear a mask because that mask is going to protect you against contracting COVID. So if you don't contract COVID, none of this matters. So please do that. The second thing is it makes a world of sense to get a booster because if we can show your immune system more of its target, even with a suppressed B cell response, maybe that's enough to boost it up. Now, I want to make a comment about testing for COVID uh, response. Many of my patients come into clinic and say, hey, can you run an antibody test to see if I have a response against COVID? And there's a major issue here that we have to talk about. The currently available commercial antibody tests that I'm aware of, so the ones that you can order through, say, Quest Diagnostics or LabCorp, these commercially available tests, which test for uh, the spike protein or the neurocapsid and they're semi-quantitative, are not necessarily thresholded to be able to detect response to vaccine. They're created to detect response after having been exposed to COVID, getting infected. What this means is that you can't necessarily take 100% at face value the, res the result. And if you read the lab, it states in there, don't use this to assess response to vaccine. Now, many, many doctors are doing it. And I I'm just putting out a, a caution. If you get the test and you see that you have antibodies, it probably means that you have antibodies. But if it's negative, I'm not sure. It probably means that it's negative, but we can't be 100%. And it's just a layer of uncertainty that I think that we have to be aware of. In a quick nutshell, we are not done with this global viral pandemic. The rates of COVID-19, particularly the Delta variant, are climbing. The rates of ICU admissions and the rates of deaths are climbing. And it's largely with the unvaccinated. My strong recommendation is to talk to your doctor about whether or not a vaccine is safe for you. And if it is, I recommend that you get vaccinated. And if you are immunosuppressed, I recommend that you get a booster. If you have MS and you're on a medicine that might impair your ability to mount a full vaccine response, I still recommend vaccination. I also recommend wearing a mask at all times and getting the booster. I recently had a fantastic live stream where I reviewed. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. A research article on MS. And it was so cool to see this growing global online community of mass. I want to say thank you to everyone that participated in that. And so a shout out to everyone around the world that jumped online for that. Be safe, please. And take care. Oh, boy.